our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Reformation Sunday. It's Affirmation of Baptism Sunday. It's Wear Red to Church. I'm so impressed by the number of people that wore red this morning, too. So, um, but what does this reading from 1 Kings have to do with Reformation? Well, first of all, we've got we to gotta fill in some gaps here, right? Last week, we talked about, for those of you that weren't here, and I'm going to fill in gaps anyhow, for those of you that were here, right? For those of you that weren't here, last week we talked about the anointing of King David, who became king over the United Kingdom of Israel and reigned over the United Kingdom for how many years? 33. 33. 33. What else is significant about the number 33? Jesus lived for 33. Tradition says Jesus lived for 33 years. David ruled over the United Kingdom of Israel for 33 years. Okay? David's son then ruled over the United Kingdom of Israel. And David's son was Solomon. And King Solomon built the temple for God, right? So in Jerusalem, Solomon built the temple. And after Solomon died, who became king? I'll give you a hint. Rehoboam. It's in our reading today. Rehoboam is Solomon's son, who is David's son. So David was king over the United Kingdom for 33 years. Then Solomon ruled and built the temple for God in Jerusalem. And then Rehoboam succeeded Solomon as king over the United Kingdom. The problem was is that Solomon, while he was wise and followed after God, sometimes his heart really didn't go with God. And so he mistreated the people in the northern kingdom by putting them, making them do things that the people in the southern kingdom didn't have to do. Right? Judah and Bethlehem didn't have to do the things that the other kingdom, the other tribes had to do under Solomon. While Solomon did some really great stuff, just like David, they both had their weaknesses. Right? Which just goes to show that all of us can be used by God, even though we think we're major mess-ups sometimes. Right? Because God used David, and God used Solomon. And we're going to hear this morning, God used Rehoboam and Jeroboam. Right? Jeroboam was a person that Solomon wanted to kill, and he fled to Egypt. And when he heard that Solomon had died, he came back to the kingdom to try to get Rehoboam to change his ways. Right? And Rehoboam said, after they came to him, said, go away for... Three days. Three days is important. Why? What else was three days? Jesus was in the grave. Are you catching the all the stuff that's in there? Right? So Jeroboam comes with a group of people from the northern kingdom and they come to, to Rehoboam and they say, release the yoke that your father put upon us and we will serve you. We will be behind you. We will follow you through anything. And Rehoboam says, come back in three days. And he seeks counsel. He goes to the older men in the community, and he says, what should I do? And what did they say? If you were to be a servant leader, you will release the yoke or lighten the yoke that your father put upon them. And do for them what they've asked for you to do. And then what did he do? He went to the people that he grew up with and said, what do you think we should do? And they said... Add to it. Right? So he's seeking counsel on what he should do. He's seeking the words of those around him, those who have been in counsel, the, the elders or the presbyters or the deacons, whatever you want to call them, the older gentlemen of the town. And he also seeks the guidance of those who are his friends. Right? Because it says he grew up with them and now they are attending to him. They are working for him, working with him. So... He gets all of this counsel and he figures out that he's not going to lighten the yoke, that he's going to increase it on them. So when they come back, he says, I'm going to give you more to do. And so what do they do? It's not even in our reading. It's not clear what happens, right? Jeroboam returns to the northern kingdom and the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom split. So now we have a split kingdom again. Rehoboam is now only king over the clans of Judah and Bethlehem. And Jeroboam, not Bethlehem, um, Joseph which is where Bethlehem is. Joseph's tribe, which is Manasseh and the other offspring of Joseph. The other 12, the other 10 tribes are now under the kingdom of Jeroboam. But here's the thing. Does Jeroboam do what he needs to do? What does it say that Jeroboam does? 
Jeroboam faces Rehoboam and gets, tries to get the yoke of the people lightened. And when that doesn't happen, Jeroboam splits the kingdom. They make Jeroboam king of the northern kingdom. And here's what it says that he does. He says, no one should go to Jerusalem to worship. So I'm going to make for you, not one, but two golden calves. Where did we see a golden calf before? In the wilderness, when they were wandering from Egypt, right? Aaron took all the gold that they, they had taken out of Egypt and made a golden calf and said, here is your God. And that's exactly what Jeroboam says, right? He set one up in, in Bethel and the other in Dan, and he said, here is your God to worship. He actually quotes what Aaron says in the wilderness. So Jeroboam, while he does right fighting for the people, does not do right by what God has called for them to do. Neither one of these kings is doing what they should be doing. But what does it say that God does? Where's God in all of this? Did God leave Rehoboam? Did he? Did God leave Jeroboam? See, this reading has everything to do with the Reformation because it split the kingdoms. And what Martin Luther did by nailing the 95 Theses to the church door in Wittenberg split the, the church. Luther didn't intend to split the church. Luther intended for there to be a discussion about what needed to happen. Luther was seeking counsel to try to make the church better, to try to make the church what God had called for it to be. And he posted something for a discussion. And because of that, things got bad quickly. And so the church divided like the kingdom. So I could ask you the same thing about the church. Did God leave the Catholic church? Did God leave the Lutheran church? No. No. You see, God is always faithful in everything that happens. Here in about seven minutes, don't hold me to that, six young people are going to come up here and affirm their faith. Six young people have been through a process and are going to come up here and say, yes, all of the promises that my parents made for me when I, they brought me and baptized, got me baptized, I now take on as my own. I now claim my faith as something that is mine. I'm going to walk into it for the rest of my life. I heard some really good answers to some questions that I had. So that I asked each confirmation student six questions, at least. Some of them have extra parts. And depending upon what their answers are, there's probably a couple more questions that go into that. But I asked at least six questions. And I'm profoundly shocked each year by the answers that I get. Because they understand it. And they actually get it. And they know what they're doing. And they understand their faith. I know some of the parents are looking at me now like, are you really talking about my kid? Really? Yes, I am talking about your kid. They get it. They understand it. And they want to do this. And that's taking a step out into the world and doing something that God has called us to do. Because each and every one of us, every day, can affirm the faith that we have in God. Each and every one of us can, every day, affirm what God has given to us and use that into the world that we live within. Each and every day, every one of us is like Rehobim and Jeroboam, where we have to seek counsel from those around us, and we have to diligently listen to them and understand what God is calling us to do and to go and do that. And you know what? Sometimes we're going to get it wrong. And what happens when we do that? We step back, we take, we take account of what's happened, and we apologize and we move forward. But we know that even in those moments of mistakes, that God has never left us, that God is always going to be there. Because that's what God has always promised. No matter what happens in this life, God is never going to leave you nor forsake you. And that's something that we can all grab hold of. And as we watch these six young people affirm their faith this morning, each and every one of you is invited to join with them and say the words that each one of them says. And know that God affirms your faith just as much as he does theirs. Because that's what God said he would always do.
to be there to love us, to watch us, and to help us, to guide us on our paths, and to help us be beacons of his hope and his mercy in a world that so desperately needs to see it. So don't think you need to start a revelation or a reformation to do something important for God. Maybe it's just as much as saying, I believe, and no matter what happens, I'm going to follow after God. And sometimes I screw up, and I'm sorry. But God help us all to do what God has led us to do and to follow after him.